I wanted to let you know there are appetizers in the back of the room, so feel free to help yourselves. I know people have been asking for an Esha prayer room, so we're working on that. Um, so in the meantime, please get some appetizers, and we'll be serving dinner shortly. Thank you. So I would like to start into the program quickly. The first and foremost thing that we would like to do is start with the recitation of the Holy Quran. And we have Sheikh Ismail Al-Qadi, who's an Imam at the Islamic Center of Naperville. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا إن لله ما في السماوات والأرض ألا إن وعد الله حق ولكن أكثرهم لا يعلمون هو يحيي ويميت هو يحيي ويميت وإليه ترجعون يا قد جاءتكم موعظة من ربكم قد جاءتكم موعظة من ربكم وشفاء لما في الصدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ويكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وكان ذلك عند الله فوزا عظيما صدق الله عظيم تكبير الله أكبر جزاك الله خير شيخ just a quick translation of the, some of the verses Surah Yunus Ayahs 55 to 58 it is to God that everything in the heavens and the earth truly belongs. God's promise is true, but most people do not realize it. It is he who gives life and takes it, and you will all be returned to him. People, a teaching from your Lord has come to you, a healing for what is in your hearts, 
and guidance and mercy for the believers. Say, O prophet, in God's grace and mercy, let them rejoice. These are better than they all accumulate. Surah Fat, Ayahs 1 through 5. Truly we have opened up a path to clear triumph for you, O prophet, so that God may forgive your past and your, and your future sins, complete his grace upon you, guide you to a straight path, and help you mightily. It is he who has made his tranquility descend into the hearts of the believers to add faith to their faith. The forces of the heavens and the earth belong to God. It is all-knowing and all-wise. So as to admit believing men and women into gardens graced with flowing streams, there to remain, absolving their bad deeds, a great triumph in God's eyes. The next part of the program is the, a brother who is the founder of Celebrate Mercy, Tarek al-Masidi was raised in Knoxville, Tennessee, where he served two years at the, as a local MSA president. In 2001, shortly after 9-11, he co-founded the first ever Ramadan Fastathon and coordinated the publication of a 45-page Fastathon organizing packet. I didn't realize Fastathon needs 45 pages, but it looks like it does. This packet, distributed by MSA National, has brought the annual charity event to 300 campuses, mashallah, worldwide. It has now begun the spreading among corporations like Google. Tharik went on to study Arabic and Islam at various Dean Intensive programs and in Jordan for one year. He then returned to earn an MBA. While pursuing his MBA, he was elected as the president of the Muslim community of Knoxville in 2010. He founded Celebrate Mercy. He now works at Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati, Ohio where he also volunteers with both Zaytuna College and serves on the board of Seekers Guidance in Clifton Mass. Without further ado, Brother Tarek Al-Masidi. Assalamu alaikum. I wanted to thank everyone for uh, coming tonight. Um, I'm really happy to be here. One thing that's not in the bio is that I actually lived in Chicago for a year a few years ago. Um, I was busy working. Um, with a Muslim company here, so I didn't get to mingle as much with the community as I would have liked. But I'm really happy to be back in Chicago. And growing up in Tennessee, um, where there's really no halal, zabiha restaurants, and then, you know, kind of the upgrade to Cincinnati, alhamdulillah, where, you know, there are a few there. And then coming here, where there's actually a halal KFC. Mashallah, like, that was a dream come true for me. Like, KFC, I've been eating a lot of fried chicken uh, since I got here yesterday, actually. So, um, I'm really happy to be here in Chicago, uh, and actually, I guess I could call myself a Midwesterner now as well. Um, so tonight, inshallah, is a very historic night. It's the third among a series of fundraisers, but alhamdulillah, many people refer to Chicago as the Medina of America, and uh, I don't say that wherever I go, by the way. I, people really call that Chicago as the Medina of America. And we live in times when just a few years ago, and I think it's a lot worse now, just a few years ago, 22% of Americans that were polled in a Gallup poll said that they would not want a Muslim as a next door neighbor. And 39% of Americans said that Muslims in America, they believe Muslims should be carrying around a special ID, identifying them as a Muslim for security purposes. Uh, just me, myself, like a few years ago, coming back from Egypt, um, on my last day in Egypt, I had a to-do list of things I wanted to get done, uh, you know, just buy gifts and whatnot. But one of them was to visit the masjid of Imam Shafi'i. So uh, coming back in customs, they went through all my luggage, because my middle name is Osama, and they went through all of my uh, luggage and, and everything. And so they read this to-do list, and they went to the side and really like thought of, you know, were talking and deliberating, like, what's this guy is a threat or something. And they came back to me and said, we have a problem here. We demand to know, like, we want to know who is this Imam Shafi. You know, <laughs> they, said, they said, we want to know who is this Imam Shafi. Like, were you, like, taking some courses with him? Like, were, you know, um, was he training you? And I said, yeah, I wish he was training me, honestly. But uh, actually, he's like, you know, a very saintly figure in our history that died a few years ago. But so there's, well, not a few, a few hundred years ago, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I need to brush up on my history. Um, so uh, 
one of the things that concerned me, and I think was one of the main reasons that um, for starting Celebrate Mercy, is that you look at these things like the underwear bomber and the shoe bomber and this guy in Portland recently, uh, James Allen Muhammad. These people, unfortunately, they all seem to have the name Muhammad in their name. Um, and the fact that, you know, if I took a video camera right now and just went out in the streets and asked people, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word Islam? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the name Muhammad? I think we would be very saddened by the results of a survey like that. I think it is the biggest crime that we've allowed to be committed that our Prophet can be associated with fear, uh, with hatred, with oppression. Um, and we, as Muslims, we have a responsibility for someone that we are supposed to love more than our own parents, more than our own family, more than anyone else, more than our own selves. Uh, we cannot allow his name to be disgraced. We cannot allow his life for there to be misconceptions and mis his life to be misconstrued. So that's the whole point about Celebrate Mercy. And inshallah, uh, we can go into a little bit about the history of Celebrate Mercy. Um, I'm just going to say next so you can uh, progress here on the slides. I want to pull out the mic here because I don't like to stand in one place. Yeah.